Hi there, I'm Mark. You're watching the Android Authority channel. For years, Acer has been trying to make inroads into the Android phones market. Early this year, the world-famous maker of laptops and netbooks released into the Asian and European markets its mid-range dual-core Android phone, the Acer Liquid E1. Will this be the phone that finally brings Acer into the same league as bigwigs like Samsung and HTC? Sit back, watch the rest of this video, and find out. The Liquid E1 caught my attention primarily because of its compact size and shape, which leans towards roundish at a time when Android phones are usually straight-edged and rectangular with slightly rounded corners. Small, pocketable, and light, the E1 is comfortable to hold for one-handed use. With a little effort, my thumb can easily reach the farthest corner of the touchscreen. The touch panel is surrounded by a hard plastic frame. At the top side, sandwiched between the frame and touch panel edge, is the phone speaker grille. At the opposite side, on the bottom, is the phone mic. Looking at the front and sides of the phone, I can generally say that this is a brave design. Yet, I also personally feel that the phone may benefit more, aesthetically, without the plastic frame. Let's take a look at the back. It's actually pretty, but I find it a little bit overcrowded. The round grills at the top and bottom are for the stereo loudspeakers. Acer wants us to know for sure that this phone's sound system uses DTS technology, which is another way of saying you can expect audio to be awesome. This part here, obviously, is the camera lens and flash, with a small microphone hole to the right. And down here is the metallic Acer logo, embossed right in the middle of what seems to be a hyperbola of dimpled dots. To Acer's credit, this back plate is removable and feels very sturdy. To Acer's discredit, however, the back plate in my unit came with a perfectly fitting back plate, which no longer snapped tightly onto place after just a few removals. The NFC chip is embedded onto the back cover's underside. There's a slot for a standard mini SIM and for micro SD card expansion for up to 32GB more storage. Another plus point for this phone is the removable lithium ion 1760 mAh battery. This has enough juice to power the phone for about 8 to 12 hours of moderate use. Now let's turn our attention to the screen and display. This is not an HD phone. It only has QHD resolution, or 960 by 540 pixels, on a 4.5 inch IPS LCD screen, which practically gives it an effective pixel density of 245 ppi, so you can expect the display to be crisp and sharp enough to be pleasant. I notice vertical striping in the display. Perhaps it may not be noticeable to most people, it may not even be a big deal to most people. But for a sophisticated and diehard Android fan with a trained eye, this could be a big turnoff. The good news, however, is that the phone's display lives up to its liquid name in terms of snappiness and fluidity. The touchscreen is responsive enough, and scrolling through home screens is smooth enough. Web browsing is functional at best. Whichever of the two default browsers I use, either stock Android browser or Google Chrome, the phone seems to gasp for breath when rendering web pages and when zooming in or out. It's not a jitter-free ride across the web on this phone. The smoothness, along with the jitter here and there, can be attributed primarily to the phone's processing capability. The Liquid E1 is powered by a dual-core MediaTek MT6577 CPU, PowerVR SGX531 GPU, 1GB of RAM, and 4GB of internal storage. Don't worry though, app launching is rather quick and playing HD games such as Cut the Rope, Time Travel HD won't make your phone choke. Apart from that, the phone's connectivity features include Wi-Fi, near-field communication, Bluetooth 3.0, a micro USB port, and a stereo headphone port. Though armed with dual stereo loudspeakers, the Liquid E1 may not be a wise choice for hardcore media production and consumption, but it does have enough muscle for anyone to enjoy the basic pleasures of multimedia. The E1's 5-megapixel camera, for instance, is a snappy shooter. It's not exactly zero shutter lag, but the shutter speed is quite fast. The camera can use several shooting modes, several scene modes, and several image sizes for both photo and video. Don't expect photo quality to be visually stunning, but you can trust the camera to get the job done. I tried playing HD and full HD videos on the E1, and the phone was able to play them, but not without some noticeable lag or pixelation or screen artifacts. Standard definition videos, though, play back smoothly. Audio quality is quite amazing thanks to DTS technology and the dual stereo speakers at the back. But to better enjoy the crisp and pleasurable audio, you might want to plug in those headphones. One of the endearing things that I love about this phone is the fact that it is not heavily modded or heavily skinned. 
Acer UI 5.0 is a simple and easy UI, powered by Android 4.1.1 Jellybean underneath. The lock screen animation itself is a testimony to the simplicity of the UI. No fancy ripples or metal rings or light clouds, just a vertical blinds effect. I like the toggle buttons on the notification shade. I also like the feature for scheduling when to power on or power off the phone. Quite useful for those who want to turn off their phones at night when they sleep. The feature known as Float Caller also seems quite useful. It pops up an interactive alert box for incoming calls instead of opening the phone app and blocking whatever is on your screen. Acer UI is also customizable via the My Style app, which lets you choose wallpapers, including videos. You can customize your lock screen shortcuts, your ringtones, notification alerts, and volume levels. It even lets you choose amazing transition animations and settings for your home screen. My favorites are Flip and Cube. The Acer Liquid E1 isn't exactly a WoW phone, but it's not exactly a so-so phone either. It has its shortcomings, but it is not made purely of shortcomings either. As a mid-range phone, it does the job well enough for me to give it a pat on the back. It has good looks, a sturdy design, a fairly fast hardware configuration, coupled with software and UI complementing the phone's hardware muscle, and all the basics for enjoying multimedia. Yet, the flip side of all this is that the Liquid E1 will never satisfy anyone who yearns for more Android power and more smartphone performance. What about you? What do you like or dislike about the Acer Liquid E1? Would you consider buying the Acer Liquid E1? Share your thoughts in the comments. For more Android guides, news, and reviews, visit AndroidAuthority.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Mark. Thanks again for watching. Until next time. And remember, the power of Android is yours.